Greetings everyone, Eric here. Welcome back to another video. This one's gonna be a little different. This is also like the second time I'm having to record this because I screwed up the uh, output on the first one. I'm currently using a different setup here. I'm using my streaming setup, uh, which is why the camera's kind of like right in front of me. The quality might look a little weird. Lighting might look a little weird. And the mic might sound different because I am using my stream setup uh, with OBS over on the side. And this microphone's kind of older. I've been having some audio troubles, so that's why I'm using an older microphone until I figure that crap out. So anyway, I wanted to make this video because Clip Studio has released a new update, um, 1.8.4, and it's done a lot of pretty big things to animation features and stuff in their versions. Um, so I just wanted to quickly go over that. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna click on live scene. So you can see the stuff like below here and then even like in the, like around the edge of the the whole screen you'll see like a border effect or something that's because this is my streaming setup it's not even a full stream setup i had to turn a few things off because i stream over on twitch i'll put a link if you guys want to watch uh when i stream anyway <clears throat> right in front of us is the clip studio launcher this is the thing that la that launches their program initially uh, i usually skip this section but you'll see here the update clip studio paint version 1.8.4 updated released um if you click this it'll bring you over here to the download page um so where you can download the thing and it'll show you how to download it's like a 300 meg uh download right now and uh it downloaded and installed very quickly um it and if you already have a version installed it'll just install kind of over top of it but it'll keep a lot of your settings um so don't worry about losing anything or uninstalling anything um, but you can see right here release notes which is really nice so you can click on that and it'll take you over to this page where you can see all the release notes and some of the features adding so I just wanted to quickly talk about some of these features and basically just show you what they are in case you're curious um, mainly mainly focus and it mainly focuses on the animation features but it also has apparently some bug updates and stuff like that so it's it's really nice um, <clears throat> I, and also, I like the little picture. Anyway, to start off, they've added, uh, you can now add audio files uh, to your timeline for sound effects and background music. Um, and I'm guessing because it's just straight up audio files, it means you can also add it for other things like uh, voice acting and stuff like that. This is something that I feel should have been implemented right from the beginning. And I know over in Japan, there was like a version of clip studio there was like an offset program that they never released over here that allowed animation studios to do that because there's a lot of animation studios that just flat out use clip studio for animation and stuff like that so it's good for that to finally come over here and it's just going to be part of clip studio paint now which is really nice um <clears throat> this will make it a lot easier for you to pretty much do most of the bulk work right in this program rather than having to make a bunch of time sheets and stuff like that and timing things out which is kind of the old-fashioned way of doing things and it's still done today like the, the, you still do time charts and time sheets but because of the the advancement in technology they don't do it that often to the point where it's like we're we're recording audio and then timing things to audio or doing animation like and having to like write down exactly what frame a syllable should land on or a note or whatever should land on nowadays you can just throw the animation in or the audio into the animation and just draw over top of that once you do your story boards and stuff like that and get your rush an rough animation set up so that's really nice um down here they've added 2d camera features have been added layers and animation folders can be stored inside 2d camera folders which can be used to add camera movement effects using the object tool you can move the tra you can move the transformation frame camera field of view on the canvas to add camera movements this is also a feature that is was sorely needed this allows you to move the camera. You can zoom in, zoom out, pan it around, do all these kinds of things. Before, if you wanted to do that, you literally had to move the layers. And if you wanted to do a zoom effect, you had to either make the image a vector and then scale it up and scale it down. And if you were using raster images, that was really difficult and that made it really hard to do things. Or you'd have to make an asset that was really huge 
and then load it into an anim into a, um, a video editing program and do things there. So this allows you to do all of it in the program and hopefully will keep the resolution from becoming an issue to where you have things being super pixelated. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, you can now carry out edits using keyframes on the timeline palette. You can register edits such as camera movements, layer transformations, layer opacity, and audio volume to keyframes. That's sorely needed for this kind of effect. And it's really nice. I love the fact that you can do opacity tricks so you can have things fading in and out. Um, you can do audio volume tricks so you can have the volume uh, building as things are getting closer to the camera and obviously fading as things get away from the camera and stuff like that. So that's a really nice feature. Um, when enable keyframes on this layer is turned on, you can use the object tool to move the layer uh, and the move tool layer, move layer tool. <laughs> to transform or move layers and layer folders, a keyframe will be added to the timeline palette in each case. That's really nice. Again, just they're adding things, they're adding new features, and then they're adding connected features, things that just make sense to have. It's like, oh, you can now add these folders and things. Well, now you can have keyframes set up for these things to do things like movements, and you can do them to the whole folder which is really nice um, for all these effects. So again, just really good quality of life things that um, should be added when you do this kind of thing. Um, when you use the object tool to select a 2D camera folder or a layer with keyframes enabled, you can edit settings such as camera movement, layer transformations, layer opacity. Using the tool property palette, you can input numeric values to allow for detailed adjustments. That's really nice. That means you can go directly into the properties of that folder and keyframe, oops, sorry, keyframe those edits, those changes you're making. That is really, 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 really nice. Um, and then of course now, Clip Studio now supports audio files. Um, hopefully they support WAV files because WAV files is, are the highest quality that you can get. Um, at least I think, I, I, like from everything I've ever worked with, with um, like music making, and editing i know wave files are like the ones you want to go with because they're just they hold the best quality and they conserve quality the best and you want that until the very end of when you're rendering out at the final product so that is really nice uh, hopefully it uh, sports wave files i have not confirmed that yet um we could try confirming that and we'll see about that obviously they've added some other things other than just animation but the animation was what I wanted to mainly talk about because that's a good that, I, that was a feature that I really thought was really nice in Clip Studio. And so it's something that I'd be willing to look over a little bit more. Uh, the command colorize has been added to the edit menu in UC Technology Preview. This feature automatically colorizes line art. You can choose from several colorize options. Um, so this is something that I'm not really familiar with. Um, I don't really color that intensely. I use very basic cell shading. But I figured this is probably something that's pretty cool for people who like to color their line art and such. Um, so this is something you guys will have to mess with and kind of let me know about because this isn't something that I'm going to use personally that often. Uh, this one's really cool. Remove tones feature. Um, basically, this allows you to remove manga tone work and stuff like that from images that you've already created. And this is so that it's easier for you to, if you want to go back to some of your older stuff and release color versions where like you, you color it and all, you don't have to sit there and try to manually remove manga tones and stuff and gray tones and stuff like that, which is really nice. Um, because I know there are artists who like to go back and do colored versions, like special edition versions of some of their earlier chapters where they're colored or stuff like that. This is cool. This is really, really cool. So I, I'm, I like that. And then of course there's just a whole bunch of corrections and improvements and stuff like you can see this this is extensive um and they they separate them based on different like categories and they even say like okay this is for all versions and then you have your pro x pro ex stuff and then you have your ex stuff because remember each version is different each one has different features ex is like the highest end version of the program that's the version i use um but if you have different versions, then you can see here all the different things that affect you uh, on your version. And you can compare versions, like when you come over here. I think if you click functions, 
and then you scroll all the way down, blip, 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 you can see some of the differences here. And I'm sure there's a more extensive list somewhere else of like all the differences between the versions. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that and look at that. And uh, I guess we could just quickly, because I think I have it set up somewhere down here. Yeah, so now it switches over to this view, which I already had open because I have something I actually need to work on. Um, let's just quickly open up a thing. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And this is how you uh, kind of edit things. But let's just add that. Let's uh, open up the timeline. I think if you come over here, you can, you should be able to add some new layers. Um, I don't see any of the adding here, which is interesting. Like they don't have anything here to add animation things, but I know over here you can go animation. There you go. Oh, here we go. New animation layer. Uh, they really should add that to the context menu down here. Like there should be like, like new layer. There should be animation drop down when you menu or something like that. So a little weird that you can't do it here. But anyway, right here you can do that. And I also you can do it down here, which is, you, you, I know you can do stuff down here. So you can go to new animation layer. You can add the 2D camera, which is really nice. Um, which seems like it has its own, yeah, it has its own features and stuff that you can edit. You can move it around. And I believe all of that is, yes, all of this is keyframe, so I can do this. Have it come over here. Yep, look, you can even see the uh, line of where it's moving. I can come down here. And I can do, like, have it come over this way, but then also have it, like, shrink. And go like over here, which is pretty cool. And then over here, I can come have it come back down in the middle, have it really do some crazy stuff, and even have it rotate. And that should show up as it's doing things. Yep. And it does smoothing, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, so I really like that. And then you should be able to do animation, add new layer, audio. And I'm guessing there's going to be some way of adding... How do you add... Alright, it says added audio layer. Um, edit track. Not really sure how you actually add... anything to it though. Like, that's that's one thing is... Not really sure how you add audio, unless there's a import. Okay, there is an import audio feature. So let's go, let's go to Reaper. This is where I keep a lot of my music files. Okay, let me, and I'm gonna do a WAV file. And oh, there it is. Oh, because I I was on the I'm a dumb. I was on a bad frame here. So let's move this back here. And look, oh, that's nice. Look, it even shows you the waveform, which is really nice. If you're wondering why I'm looking down, it's because my tablet's down there. Um, monitor here, tablet there. So yeah. Um, obviously I'm not gonna play it like super. Okay, so it does actually work. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I don't know if you could hear that. Um, I don't think I have it set up. Yeah, I don't have it set up to listen to my uh, desktop audio. You probably heard it through my speakers because I'm not wearing headphones. It works. <laughs> I listened to that. That was interesting. Um, I think I have, yeah. Oh, but it doesn't have a scrub feature. So as you can see, I'm moving back and forth. I'm scrubbing through the animation and it doesn't play anything. What if I do... Okay, so it doesn't have a scrub feature, unless that's something you can enable. I will have to double check if... Um, you have the ability to scrub through audio. That means it'll play it kind of trying to play it in slow motion. So, I will check that another time, when I've had more time to kind of figure this stuff out. But anyway, this has gone on long enough. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, actually, let me know. Um you know, updates to things, and basic stuff like this. Um, 
I can even do that for like games or something, but whatever. Um, thank yeah, again, thank you so much for watching. I'm very tired. I'm doing this very weird in the day and I'm haven't had enough caffeine to wake me up yet. If you enjoyed the video, please give it that thumbs up. Um, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And if you want to make sure you stay notified of my content, hit the little bell notification and turn notifications on so you'll always know when I'm doing stuff. Um, like I said, I have a Twitch. You can check it out. Um, I think it's just twitch.tv slash Eric Ronan because Eric Ronan's kind of my online handle these days. If you'd like to support me in what I do, please make sure you check out my Patreon or coffee or whatever. And help support me in what I do if you would like to see some more stuff. Uh, please comment below on anything you'd like to see me do, whether it's something you want to see me draw, uh, whether it's a type of tutorial you want, um, certain products that you'd like me to look at and review. I'm always looking for new ideas for stuff. So please leave comments below and let me know what you guys would like to see next. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good time. Hope you guys enjoy the new update and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.